Hi friends, welcome to Smart News Digital. Let's have a discussion on Hindu newspaper for the date July 17th, 2018. Today, let's have a discussion for the seven topics. These are the seven topics. First topic is overdue correction. Central government have constituted a committee to revisit penal provisions of the Companies Act 2013. It is to examine the need to decriminalize certain offenses that are mentioned in that act. Why government wanted to revisit the penal provisions of the Companies Act 2013? We have to understand. Some of the provisions in the Companies Act 2013 were so tough. These provided stringent punishments for the people who committed offense. Not only for the people who committed grave offense, even the minor problems like typing error, uh, like spelling mistakes would amount to great punishments. So these were small minor violations but it amount to great punishments. So the corporates wanted government to revisit these penal provisions and to decriminalize certain offenses that are mentioned in the Companies Act 2013. It would ensure ease of doing business. If we bring these changes, it would allow the trial courts to spend more time it can devote more time on grave offenses, on serious offenses rather than get overloaded with cases of minor violations. We know that 2013 Companies Act has some provisions which are stringent in nature. But in 2013, why government have brought in a law which has stringent provisions, which can uh, disturb ease of doing business, which can disturb the interest of investors. In 2013, the situation in the country is different. The 2013 Companies Act is influenced by the high-pitched anti-corruption discourse prevailing at that point of time in the country. Several cases of crony capitalism came to light, limelight in 2013. Massive corporate frauds were reported. Because of these incidents, 2013 Act was made as very stringent. Today, the government wants to have ease of doing business investor friendly situation in order to attract investment we have to make these changes time and again corporates wanted the government to have comprehensive review of the companies act it is to revive the economy because of various corruptions that came to limelight in 2013 there is a trust deficit between industry and government but this trust deficit should not inhibit the normal business operations in the country. That's why these are the steps taken by the government to ensure that ease of doing business is good in the country and India is an investor friendly nation and we can attract more foreign investment in order to have growth, in order to revive the growth. So this particular revisiting of penal provisions of the Companies Act is to revive the economy mainly. Second topic is fix the pathol problem. According to the official statistics, because of the pathols, 11,000 lives are being lost between 2013 to 2016 and 36,421 persons are injured in India between 2013 to 2016 because of pathols. Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra are the four top states that are witnessing more injuries more lives lost because of road accidents, road crash. Every year, pathol related deaths making the headlines, especially during the monsoon time. The irony of the situation is that instead of booking the cases against the people who are supposed to maintain the roads, who are poorly maintained the roads, police reports often blame the victims, often blame the drivers for their negligence. Negligence on the part of people who are supposed to maintain the roads are not taken into account or rarely brought to book. The Indian Road Congress prescribed guidelines over 100 set of guidelines that is having the provisions how to maintain the road and it has the provisions to bring people who are designing, who are constructing the road to accountable. But the absence of unified statute or law on road construction, engineering, maintenance makes it nearly impossible to implement these Indian Road Congress guidelines. The existing legislation for road safety, that is the Motor Vehicles Act, has no provisions to ensure accountability of road authorities. If the present law has no provisions to ensure the accountability, we have to bring amendment. Thankfully, the Motor Vehicles Amendment Bill 2013, it seeks to stand on the existing law 
by bringing certain reforms in that provisions it has attempted to address the issues of liability for road defects in case of road defects the people who are supposed to maintain the road who are supposed to construct the road have to be answerable in case of road accidents happened because of defective road design then the authorities responsible have to pay rupees 1 lakh even though it is a small sum of money it is the step in the right direction so we have to appreciate and we have to bring this amendment bill successfully according to the amendment safety provisions have to be brought up by the central government let's see what are the causes of pathholes the main causes are stagnation of water on the roads during rainy season heavy traffic and the material that are used in the construction are very poor in quality and finally very important lack of proper drainage designing so what we can do to overcome all these issues what can be done we have to use standardized methodology good quality material regular maintenance of roads an effective system to ensure accountability in case of defects we have to ensure the accountability and we have to incorporate safe system approach in all aspects of road design engineering construction etc the motor vehicles amendment bill 2017 aims to rectify several systemic issues by providing uniform driver licensing system and to ensure that the children and vulnerable road users are safe enough and to ensure accountability and to rationalize penalties in case of defects this motor vehicles amendment bill 2017 is not a panacea for all the problems but it is a right step taken in the right direction so we hope this bill is passed in this session itself today's third topic is foster visas for minorities the home ministry liberalized the process of granting long term visas to minorities from three of our neighboring countries namely bangladesh pakistan and afghanistan The Home Ministry also reduced the time limit for security clearance of applicants from 45 days to 21 days. After an application reaches the central system, it is forwarded to three agencies for verification, namely Intelligence Bureau, Home Ministry, and State Government. The State Government has to run a background check using a local police, and it has to reply within 21 days. If at all it fails to reply within 21 days, that application deemed to be cleared in the future if there is a security implication the state government must answer the visa facility first introduced in 2011 for persecuted hindus from pakistan it was further liberalized in 2014 today's fourth topic is army to resume m777 trials the army will resume the trials of the us made m777 ultralight howitzer gun in pokhran firing range In 2016 itself India signed a deal with US under the foreign military sales program for 145 M777 guns at a cost of 737 million dollar following this foreign military sales program immediately two guns were delivered for calibration but unfortunately barrel burst occurred at that point of time because of that burst the trials were suspended we will know little about M777 ultralight howitzer gun It is a 155 mm 39 caliber towed artillery gun made of titanium and aluminum alloys. It weighs just 4 tons so it is transportable easily. This is enough from the UPSC point of view. Today's fifth topic is India Iran pledged to maintain trade levels. US officials asking all countries including India to bring oil imports to zero level. This particular step taken by US is to isolate Iran. and us decided to isolate iran and reimpose economic sanctions on iran we are very much aware of the fact that india is energy dependent country we need central asian countries to provide energy sources but we do not have direct access to central asian countries iran is our partner which provides accessibility through chabahar port to central asian countries we cannot forget that fact and us is imposing sanctions on iran which may impact india also india is in a critical position to balance these us is imposing economic sanctions on iran and iran is being a very good partner to india it provides chabahar port 
for India to have accessibility to Afghanistan and all the Central Asian countries. So India is supposed to take a very very balanced decision. Here comes the good news. Indian and Iranian officials said they would maintain the momentum of bilateral cooperation between them irrespective of US imposing economic sanctions on Iran or not. Today's sixth topic is direct talks with Taliban by US. The Taliban have always been wanting to have a direct talks with Americans. But Americans wanted to have a talk with Taliban in which Afghanistan government must also take part. This is a strategic shift. This is an important significant shift. First time US wanting to have a direct talks with Taliban and it directed top officials to seek all the opportunities to have a Taliban on table to have one one talk. This particular move intended to make all the stakeholders closer and lead to broader formal negotiations to end the long war. For the last 17 years the war is happening in Afghanistan. So US wanted to bring peace there. It is very good for the regional security also. This particular move of the US is one of the efforts taken to ensure peace in the region. Already last month we have a rare ceasefire in the backdrop of Eid festival and in recent time US is putting lot of pressure on Pakistan to reduce its supports to stop providing sanctuary to Taliban leaders and also recent times Islamic nations are rallying against insurgency ideology and grassroots peace movements are also taking place along with these efforts US personal move to have a talk with Taliban directly is a very good move this particular move shows a sense of urgency in the administration to break the stalemate in Afghanistan if the peace comes into picture in Afghanistan it is good for the regional security and of course to India also today's seventh topic is IMF cuts India growth forecast for 2018 IMF in its world economic outlook report it is updation from its April projection in that updation India's growth rate has been cut down, slightly cut down by IMF. As per the present projection, India's growth rate would be 7.3% in 2018, 7.5% in 2019 against 6.7% in 2017. This growth rate making India is one of the fastest growing country among major economics. Even though India's growth rate is slightly less compared to IMF April projections, it continues to be fastest growing country and it also outperforming China in all the aspects. But we must try to understand why the projection has cut down our growth rate slightly. It is due to the facts of higher oil prices and tighter monetary policy due to higher expected inflation. According to IMF Global Economic Outlook report, global growth is projected to reach 3.9% in 2018 and 2019. Compared to global economic growth, India's economic growth is very very good. But we have to do more to ensure that the growth can be further enhanced in order to revive our economy. Thank you.